Welcome to the Fit Dad Nation podcast, forging strong fathers and raising a stronger generation. It's time to get up or shut up with your host, Steve Roy. Hey guys, this is Steve Roy, host of the Fit Dad Nation podcast. Welcome to the show. Thanks for listening. So before I uh, get into today's show, I just want to share a few things. First, if you're enjoying and getting value from the podcast we're doing here, and this is our 66th episode, uh, I'll just ask you to please consider leaving a review on iTunes. It does. It'll help us grow and be found by more men across the world. So I really appreciate it. Secondly, and this is something that uh, I'm very excited about. It's our private membership program called the Fit Dad Nation Inner Circle. It's just a, it's a hub and community for dads looking to reclaim their health and fitness, and, and they're ready to work for it. And as you know, this industry is filled with bullshit and fake coaches, scammers, people just looking to make a quick buck selling you garbage. And I just, I hate that about this business. And this program that I created cuts through all of that. And it's it's very interactive. We've got monthly uh, fitness challenges, live Q&As, full workout programs, tutorials, weekly mobility workouts, and even transformation challenges. And we work within small teams and it's based on uh, accountability. So if you're looking for a, you know, a tribe of like-minded dads working towards the same things and you're ready to get to work, take a look at the program. It can be found at fitdadnation.com forward slash inner circle. I'll link to it in the show notes. Um, so my guest today is somebody that I interviewed last year and it's been one of our, our most downloaded shows to date. And her name is Jamie Elizabeth Thompson. She's a holistic intimacy and sex coach. And it, when it comes to understanding what makes women tick, she's an expert. And so this, of course, is tremendously helpful for us as men who are always looking for ways to better understand the needs of our wives and significant others. And you know, since our first interview, we've actually had a, a number of questions come from men in our community. Uh, and, and Jamie's been uh, kind enough to agree to come on the show again and answer some of them today. And I'm actually really excited and looking forward to this. So Jamie, welcome back. Yes, it's so good to be back, Steve. Thanks for having me on. You got it. You got it. So you're the first repeat guest we've had on the show. And it's it's really because we've had so much positive feedback from our first conversation. And I'm getting message after message from guys actually literally saying how our core conversation, which was maybe an hour at the most, literally helped their relationships and their sex lives. And I mean, it was so powerful. And so, you know, if you haven't listened to our first uh, uh, interview, I'll link to it in the show notes. Um, but for those who haven't, if you could just take a minute, maybe Jamie, and just tell us about yourself uh, a little bit. Yes, absolutely. So I work with couples and individuals to help them communicate effectively about sensitive topics such as intimacy and sex so that everyone can be more fulfilled. So everything from being able to create deeper intimacy to having a hotter sex life to learning how to get your needs met in your relationship through being able to communicate about them honestly and in a way that occurs as an opportunity for your partner. And I think that's one of the keys is that a lot of times people are communicating about what they want, either passive aggressively or ineffectively or it shows up as a demand or their partner just doesn't understand. And really speaking to your audience here, Steve, I find that a lot of, of men are in relationships that, you know, there's a lot of love and, but they're feeling misunderstood somehow in their sexuality, their sexual desires are not being met and they aren't feeling a real bridge to have those met with, with their partner. And it seems like, you know, their, their wife or their girlfriend or their partner just doesn't want to meet their needs. And I find that this actually is not the case most of the time. If it is, then there's a, there's a deeper issue going on. But most of the time, partners who are in a loving relationship want to meet each other's needs. They just don't know how, or they don't understand. And so I'm, I'm loving that we're going to dive in a little bit deeper here of really looking at like, how can your audience get their needs met in their relationship? And, and why is that important? And, and how can it show up in, in 
in their wife's world or in their partner's perspective as an opportunity and as a, a means to connect deeper and go deeper in their relationship. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I mean, that's just it. You know, so many people are, are even, you know, happily married. But yeah, like you said, they're just not on the same page there and they don't know how. It's not that they don't want to, to meet each other's needs or have amazing sex with each other, but they don't know how to communicate it and things get lost in transition. And I know, you know, a vast majority of people probably listening to this are like, shit, that's me. All right. Um, and so <clears throat> that's why it's it's so amazing to have somebody like you on the show. Where we can talk about this because this is this is what you do. You help men and women through this. And, you know, it's only it's only going to strengthen your relationship when you're able to, to, to get to that point. So <clears throat> I was listening to the show we did um, back in December and uh, we talked about a, a few things, but one was taking responsibility for our role. So I'm talking about men here for our role in our sexual relationships. And so, you know, that's one of the things I wanted to get into a little bit more because I feel like a lot of guys play the blame game. My wife never wants it. You know, she doesn't find me attractive. She's too tired, right? And it's, you know, I want to hear your thoughts again on this, but I think in the first interview you had said that's not necessarily the case, right? It's 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 the fact that, you know, you have to come from a, a totally different place and take responsibility for this and stop blaming your wife. And um, so <clears throat> I think that's going to be really helpful as well to, to get back into that. But um, yeah, I had sent you um, some questions and we talked about a little bit because there's I had a lot of questions and I chose some of the um, kind of the ones that I found most interesting. And so, you know, I wanted to get into those as well. And so, you know, here's, here's my thought before we get into all this. You know, we talk about intimacy, vulnerability, confidence, trust, respect. And I think <clears throat> these are all very important parts of building and creating healthy emotional and physical relationships with our wives or significant others. But I think, you know, at the, at the very core of all of this, right, all of those things is the deep, deep desire to have that real emotional and powerful sex. <clears throat> you know, I mean, men, obviously, you know, driven largely by the need for sex. And so, you know, I'm just, I'm so interested to get into, get into this because, you know, I've had, I've had so many guys and I've had conversations of well, what makes you tick? You know, what, why do you want to be fit? Do you want to be around longer for your kids? Do you want to be able to keep up with your kids at the playground? And so many guys privately will say, no, I just want, I want to fuck better, you mm -hmm. know? And I mean, that, that's, you know, I, I you know my group uh -huh. isn't a bunch of crass guys. <laughs> it, it's like. That's, yeah. that's the primal thing right there. Mm -hmm. And so, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, is that what you see like at the bottom of a lot of what men truly want? It's, it's that, that desire. I, I think, I think it is that I think you're, you're right in, I mean, you know, men are saying that because that's how it's occurring for them. And I think that inside of that, like if we just unpack the word fuck a little bit mm -hmm. here, I think that inside of that is also a desire for a deeper connection because fucking lovemaking sex, whatever we are calling it is the, the deepest connection that a man and a woman can really have. Like it's, it's the ultimate connection. So I, I feel like a lot of men are programmed to think that they need to be these like kings of fucking, right? And actually what is underneath that is a desire for a deeper connection. And you said something about having, you know, emotional, intimate sex. And, um, and I think that one of the keys to actually fucking better is making a connection between your cock and your heart so that it, it's not about one or the other. And, and there's a, the, the energy is actually moving inside your body. So in, in some Eastern philosophies, such as Taoism, they, they refer to sexual energy as a more concentrated life force. 
So you may or may not have heard the word chi before. Mm -hmm. That's the, um, you know, the Taoist uh, name for universal life force. So they call sexual energy jing chi. And what it means is it's simply a more concentrated, potent version of chi, of universal life force. And so I think when men are saying, I want to fuck better, they're also meaning like, I want to experience more of my life force flowing in my body. And I want to be in my power and then see that reflected by, you know, my wife or beautiful feminine being like, I want to be in that relationship, in that connection. And so the, a, a part of that is, is turning on the connection between w- your cock and your heart so that they aren't mutually exclusive, but rather they can work together. And when they are mu- mutually exclusive and men are only coming from their cock and they're not connected to their heart, that's often when they are getting rejected by the, the women in their life, because women are saying things like, you're not present. I can't feel you. You don't care about me. All you want is sex, things like that, because they aren't feeling them. And, and, you know, this goes into a whole something that happens, you know, called the Madonna whore complex where men love on, on one, it's like on one channel men can love and on the other channel, um, they can fuck. And it's hard to like combine the two. And sometimes it's hard to have the experience of desire of sexual desire and lust and love for the same woman because it's, it's been separated. And I think this is a cultural issue that, that is, is one of the basis of, of a lot of, um, sexual challenge in long-term relationships is this disconnection between love and desire. So a, a lot of what I think will, will support with, with this is actually connecting more with the heart in, in the same in the same sitting, in the same connection, in the same, you know, lovemaking session as you are, are, are having sex with your partner of really actually allowing yourself to open up your emotions and feel, is this making sense or is it, is it too? No, I know it makes sense. I'm I'm, I'm like, I'm literally thinking about it as you're saying it, trying to get Mm -hmm. into that mind frame of what you're saying. And so I have a couple thoughts. Um, you know, if, if, if you know the the person that I'm talking to, the people that we're talking to right now, the, piece, the people that I want to talk to and help, or and have have you speak to, are the men that are interested in that deep emotional connection. It's not the guys that just want to know how to be better porn stars, right? They don't want to. That's that's just surface crap to me, and I yeah. don't have any interest in, in those types of men in my community. There are certainly plenty of communities of dads that have those guys in there. But I'm not interested in that because, you know, I, I've, you know, been fortunate enough to experience, you know, having sex where it's very emotional and that's a thousand mm-hmm. times better than just banging somebody. You know, that's just that's not even close. And so the people that are, you know, in my community and they're asking these questions, you know, they are the ones that are interested in, you know, not keeping those things separate, you know, and, and figuring out how to, you know, like you said, bring those things together. And I think the key then is, is to make sure that your wife or your partner knows that, because I believe you that, that your audience is, you know, heart centered men. And sometimes what happens though, is in this thing, you know, it's, we're kind of centering around communication here in the communication of that, your woman might not be receiving that. And that I think is the key for a lot of these questions that, you know, we can dive into here of like, you know, if you have a fetish or you want to spice it up, a a woman who feels loved completely and in the way that she wants to be loved and a woman who feels like spicing it up or exploring something new 
is going to be in service to creating more love and a deeper connection in your relationship is going to be way more open to exploring. And I think often men have the experience that their partner feels that way, but they haven't really fully checked in to see. And, or, or there's things that, you know, she's saying like, you know, passive aggressive comments or, you know, she's, she might be acting in a way that is, is not a well-loved and well-fucked woman and a well-loved and well-fucked woman is going to be open to exploring something that is a true deep desire that you are bringing to her with vulnerability and presence and curiosity and interest in, in her desires and, and what she wants as well. Yeah. I mean, I th- you think that's, that's exactly what we want. Obviously we don't have a, a there's no quick solution to, to build that, but I mean, uh, you know, it stems from, you know, having a healthy relationship in the first place. Right. And then communicating, you know, it's not a phys- the physical act of being better at sex or anything like that. It's, it's really coming from your mind and, and communicating with your spouse and, and so you understand each other. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, and again, you know, that's, I think that's just, that's the hang up for the m- majority of men. And I'm sure, you know, you do this for a living. You've sure you've seen it many, many times. Um, either the, one of the spouses doesn't know how to share that feels weird. Sharing it feels uncomfortable. feels like they're going to get rejected. Um, and then, the, you know, the, in my experience, a lot of women, they feel like you're just constantly hassling them. All you ever want is sex. You know, just leave me alone. And it's because, you know, there's that big disconnect. Um, mm-hmm. And so, yeah, some of these questions, um, and again, I want to be mindful of your time because we've got, I don't know, maybe eight or seven or eight questions, something like that. But we're probably going to dig into some of these. So I want to make sure we have time for uh, the most interesting questions. Um, and and so uh, you actually mentioned it a few minutes ago um, and... and one of the men in our community asked, he said, you know, how how do we make things a little more kinky? You know, nothing crazy, just a little more spice. And you started to, to talk about that a little bit a second ago. Yes, absolutely. So um, there's, there's that and another question that I'm going to combine here. And the other question is, how do I tell my wife I really want or I really want to try something new in the bedroom without coming across as a sexual deviant. So I'm going to combine these two. Mm -hmm. And the first piece about this is my, my question is, do you feel at peace and in alignment with the thing that you are bringing to your wife? Or do you feel like a sexual deviant? Um, do you feel are, are you excited and just like, wow, I really want to, you know, spice something up and make it more kinky as, as something that will serve the relationship or do you have shame about it? And, and that's somewhere where there might be some internal work to do. I think often I, I, I see men in this situation wanting to bring something to their, to their partner and they, they aren't at peace with themselves. They, they, they have shame about the desire that they have. And that's then some inner work to do, you know, with a professional or a, a men's group or, or somewhere where you can talk about your desires so that you can find peace with them because women read energy very well. Women are very empathetic and intuitive. And so when, if, if you're communicating like, Hey, you know, I want to, I, I'm, I would love to, um, tie you up and, and explore being a little more dominant and explore a little bit of kink. And if you're just excited and clear and unapologetic about that, it, it, it can come across as a big turn on, but if you're apologetic about it or you're collapsed or you're in, you know, in fear of rejection or you feel ashamed about it, she's going to read that energy and it's not going to be congruent So congruence, let's have that be the word of the day, because that's really what we're talking about here. When, when a woman can experience you as congruent, that's when it's sexy and and it polarizes her into this, this place of, um, of being in her feminine 
and, and being excited about what you, what you are bringing. So that's one, one half of it. The other half of it is, um, checking in about what she also wants. So it's like, if you are, are, are coming to her and saying, you know, I want to, I want to, you know, get more kinky and I'm, you know, I'm interested. I want to like, you know, let's, let's play with, let's play with some food. Let's get out the, the, you know, the, um, the fruit and the chocolate syrup, I guess, you know, these are fit dads, so maybe not the chocolate syrup, but <laughs> the fruit <laughs> and, <Protein> um, <laughs> let's, let's, let's get out the protein powder and, um, no, you know, like let's, let's, let's get together and, you know, play with some food and I want to, or, you know, or that, you know, someone mentioned something about a foot fetish, you know, or I want to, I want to lick your toes and, you know, it's like, it can be from this place of, of excitement, but if you are not, in a place of being attuned and listening to what the things that she has told you that she wants, it, it can come across like you're hassling me. You just want stuff all the time. And this, so, so this is like, if she's always, I'm just going to use this as an example. If she's always telling you that, you know, she wants like, you know, to, to spend some quality time connecting when you get home from work before you turn on sports. Like she wants like, you know, some moments of, of connection and you are not doing that. And then you show up and say, you know, the next day and you're super excited. Hey, I got the protein powder. I got some fruit. Let's get kinky. You know, (laughs) she, uh, is going to be like, what? No, I mean, you're not, we're not even connecting like, and, and just completely write it off. So, there, there's kind of two aspects to this. One is, you know, are you, are you at peace with your desire and, and is it just coming from a place of excitement and fun and, and to create a deeper connection with her? And if you're coming from that, then, then be congruent in that and let that communicate and let her know, Hey, I think that this would be something that would support us in, um, in connecting deeper and having more fun and, 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 you know, bringing some spice back. And I, I care about you and I care about our sex life and I want it to be amazing, you know? So that's half of it. And then the other half is like, are you taking out the trash? You know, are you, are you showing up in the relationship in the foundational ways that matter to her? Because that is going to have there be a ground of health in your relationship and an openness on her end to exploring. Okay. You know, that last point makes perfect sense. Um, you know, I've, I've read the book, The Five Love Languages. Um, you know, in, in my partner, I know her love language and I've found that when I am doing it, it's, it's acts of service for her. And so mm-hmm. when I do, you know, like you said, small shit like that, taking out the trash, you know, doing something that she didn't expect that's n- you know, really nothing much, then it, it becomes um, a whole different ballgame. You know, she's more interested in me because of those things, because I'm, I'm speaking her language. So that's something for guys to think about is it could be something very small that you're just missing. You're not picking up on her on her signals or what she needs and it has nothing to do with sex at all. Right. And and if you have a sense, like if you're if you're, you know, a man and you're listening to this right now and you're like, ooh, that might be me, then before you go and and start talking about your new kinky desires, I would highly recommend checking out the love languages. It's, it's a very, it's a very simple phenomenon and maybe you already know it. If you don't check it out and, and ask your partner, which ones of these are you, you know, so I can learn how to, uh, more so I can learn how to love you in the way you want to be loved and, and have that conversation with each other and, and let her know what yours are as well. Um, the, you know, the, the, you know, with the golden rule of, of treat others, how they want, uh, how you want to be treated. I call it the platinum rule of treat others, how they want to be treated. And that's where I think the love languages can really support, um, as like creating a basis and ground of health for getting into some of these other, um, kinkier conversations. So, so if, if that's you and that's your relationship, then, then I would, or maybe you do know her love languages and you're like, wow, I really know her love, love languages is, is um, words of affirmation. And, you know, I haven't really told her how beautiful she is or how much I appreciate, you know, the dinner that she made or the way that she just 
thinks of me and, um, and shows up without me asking, you know, like it's, it's, if you haven't fulfilled on that, then I would drop everything and send that text right now, you know, d- surprise her, bring, you know, if it's, it's, it, if it's gifts, you know, go, go get her favorite flowers and just show up with them at home. Or if it's acts of service, um, you know, run an errand for her, make her life easier somehow. I mean, the, the, all these love languages have very simple, concrete ways you can fulfill. And, and a, a woman who feels like, she is loved and, and cared for in the way she wants to is so much more open sexually. I mean, I just can't emphasize this enough that it's like, you know, while men are always looking for, um, you know, like you said, men are like, why, why do, why do I want to be fit? Well, cause I want to fuck better. Mm-hmm. It's like women are always looking for, well, I want, you know, I want to, I want to be loved and I want to be in connection. And the, the feminine is, is always looking for that. So look at how you can create a deeper connection with her and then connect that with exploring sexually as an opportunity to create even more intimacy between you. Yeah. And then in an interesting, um, <clears throat> quick story, when I f- first started dating, um, the woman I'm with now, she was, um, she gets a lot of, uh, personal fulfillment from giving gifts. <clears throat> like she just feels really good about giving. And so mm-hmm. she would, constantly be coming home with things for me surprises like you know new under armor clothes or you know something that i would like right and she never could understand why i wasn't more excited you know and it wasn't a couple years until until we were a couple years into the relationship that you know we realized well listen you know my, my love language isn't gifts at all um it's it, it's uh, words of affirmation you know so so we were not on the same page there and so once she understood that you know it made a big difference. So for guys listening, you know, it really does help a lot to understand which language you speak and and your partner speaks. Yeah. And then, you know, just to, to kind of segue this back into, um, the, the flavor of some of these questions is then what we're talking about in a lot of these questions is what is your erotic love language? your erotic language, you know, like, so we have these love languages and once that is, um, fulfilled in a woman, she is much more interested in exploring your erotic languages. So I created something to support, uh, people and couples like you in, in having, uh, a, a more fulfilling, intimate life. And it's called the erotic menu. And so it's a way of, of breaking down the, the four different erotic languages. And so we can have a link to that in, in these show notes here, but this is one of the tools that I use to create a shared reality and shared language and just deeper understanding between partners of, of what they're actually wanting intimately. And it sounds like a lot of men in, in these, in these questions are wanting more, you know, they're wanting more of the taboo kink, um, kind of, of sex. And that's, you know, that that's common. And a lot of women want that as well. They just might not know that it's available on the menu. So when, when you can explore something and similarly to the love languages, when, when, when each partner can learn how to meet each other's needs and in the way that they want to, in the way that their partner wants to be met, instead of assuming that, you know, the sex that I want to have is the sex that you want to have. It can be very different. And so I think it's like in, in creating, in, in letting it be different and actually having a conversation that's like, Hey, this is the kind of sex that I want to be having more. What kind of sex do you want to be having more? then, then you can look at, okay, well, let's see how we can both fulfill on the different, the different things that we want. And I'll just say this, her erotic menu type might be more of the kind that really just likes a lot of foreplay and, and slowness and sensuality. And it might not be the super kinky tie me up stuff that might be yours, but that doesn't mean you both can't get what you want. Just know, and don't assume that what she wants is the same thing as what you want. Sure. So, you know, know, circling back, uh, I guess my question is, 
you know, you said that if a man is into something particular, some kind of kinky thing, you know, he needs to, you know, take ownership of that and not be, you know, shy about or sheepish about it. But it's, it is still taboo. Like, you know, guys don't share that with other guys. You know, even my closest friends, I don't share the things that I'm interested in sexually because some of them are weird. And so, you know, in my opinion, so, so taking that to a woman, you're like, Ooh, she's really going to think this is weird. So uh, maybe I'll just like throw it out there and see what happens and see what she says, you know, cause it's hard to say, I like this. And you know, you have run the big risk of someone saying that's fucking weird, man. What do you, what are you a freak? You know? And I think a lot of guys have that same thing because there's a lot of, there's a lot of us that, have these kind of dark desires, especially with the world of porn where you can go as deep as you want. <clears throat> and, you know, even saying it out loud is is hard, let alone saying it to your partner. Well, I know we've been married for eight years or 10 years, but I really want to do this. And, and she's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? You know, yeah. I, think, I think that's the problem. So how do you take ownership of that? Say, so, you know what? I like this. And just, you know, put it out there and, and not be worried about what's going to happen. You know, wh- wh- what's she going to say? Well, it's definitely vulnerable. And um, and I think that, you know, there's ways to, to set up and broach the conversation of like, you know, I I think I think some some terms like, you know, I'm I'm interested or I'm I'm discovering. I, I you know, I, I'm wanting to spice things up. I'm wanting to explore more with you sexually and actually just bringing that conversation up and, and talking about it. And the thing is, is that this is a taboo conversation. I mean, there, this, there's a lot of cultural programming that she is working against and that you are working against in this. So there's got to be a willingness for it to be a little messy. Like that's, that's the risk that you take is, is it might be a little bit messy in, in bringing it up. And I, and I think that the more vulnerability about how uncomfortable you feel or how you feel like, you know, I don't even feel like I can really talk to, um, my guy friends about this, you know, like I just feel a little uncomfortable about talking about it in general and our relationship really matters to me and, and being in a a sexually satisfying relationship really matters to me. And I want to go, go deeper with you. And I think that I, I have some ideas and they're, they're, they're not necessarily traditional, um, there, you know, I want to explore some, some things that are maybe a little non-traditional. And I'm wondering if you're open to having a conversation about that, you know, or bringing it in some way that's, that's just honest. That's just authentic. I mean, if this is the, the person that you are choosing to spend your life with being able to talk about this stuff, especially when this is the person you're choosing to spend your life with. And it's the only person that you are having sex with being able to talk about what you want sexually, it, it should be the most natural, the most natural thing to talk about with your partner. And the fact that it's not shows the issue of that, that, that we are all facing, right? Like it, it, it should be like, wow, you're the person that I have sex with. So talking with you about exactly the kind of sex I want to have should be really natural yet. It's not. So I just want everyone to, to look at that to look at that, it, it, you know, it's like, it's like hiring a fitness coach and then not wanting to tell your fitness coach, um, you know, what, what you're doing for workouts. It's like, you have to tell your fitness coach that because they are the one that is supporting you with that. So if you have a wife and you're having sex with her, she's the one that should know a before, you know, even all of your guy friends and that, like, I understand the discomfort of like talking about this. And, and I also invite people to do that inside of safe spaces and men's circles and places where you can really get into that, um, and, and get, and receive more approval for your desire. 
But ultimately, this is a this is a tough conversation to broach. And once you do, and if you do it effectively, then you just open up the world, the, the sexual world for the rest of your relationship. So it's really a matter of looking at like, is that discomfort and that nervousness worth what's possible? And that doesn't mean it won't be messy and it doesn't mean it won't be a process. You know, you, you, you will have to be patient and you might need some support from, you know, a men's group or a professional to really troubleshoot how you are talking about this and how you're bringing it up. But ultimately I think that even if it's sloppy and, and you fail the first time that that's the first step because this, this is the only person who can, who can give you this thing that you want. So it's like, it's, it's really, um, I think it's just a matter of like really looking deep inside and, and seeing if like, if this is worth it for you, then, then, then do it. Cause it's not worth shutting yourself down. Yeah. I mean, so I, I think a lot of men want to know that they're not freaks. Uh, I mean, like, mm. because no one was really talking about it. Right. And they can hide in their, their office or their, their basement and watch porn and whatever kind of porn they want. Um, and it's just, it's just them. But, you know, it's a very common thing. And, you know, I just want to hear your quick thoughts on it because, um, you know, you're around this stuff and, and so you understand this. But, you know, I Googled before we, we um, got on the, uh, the show and it was like the top 10 sexual fetishes and it was all of them were listed out. And it's like millions, we're talking millions and millions and millions of people have some form of one of these fetishes. So it's not like it's just you alone you know, being a weirdo, it's, this is, this is a pretty normal thing to like certain things. It's so normal. I can't even tell you. I mean, I, I have, you know, confidentiality agreements with, with everyone that I work with and, and that's really important. So I'm not going to, you know, ever say anybody's name, but the things that people tell me, it, it's, it's remarkable on both sides, women have it too. There's so many different fetishes and fantasy and taboo interests and sexual desires that are so common. And yet there's this, there's this contradicting programming of like, you know, we don't talk about that. You know, we, we, are, are buttoned up and, uh, pretending that we just all want to have, you know, missionary position sex with the lights off and, you know, and, and that's it. And we do that once a week and then, and then it's good. Like that nobody actually wants that. Nobody wants that. That's not, that's not actually what, that's just the default. But this issue with communicating about sex has gotten in the way of, of people actually talking about what they want. So it seems like that's just what's normal. And, and then, you know, with, like you mentioned in the world of porn, men are discovering that there's so much else that is possible yet. They don't feel they can communicate about it. And, and women are confused because you know, there's, there's all kinds of, you know, there's, there's slut shaming and there's, you know, being a, you know, being a good woman or being a good wife or, you know, having kids. There's a lot of different things that get in the way in the female mind of, of actually feeling and tuning into what they really desire and then being open to what their partners desire. It's just, this is just uncharted territory, but it's the thing that everybody wants. Just nobody is saying. So it it just knowing that going into the conversation that even if you're met with resistance, I'm thinking of a couple that I worked with where, you know, he came into a conversation was like, you know, I'm, I'm really interested in, in trying some of these things. And, um, you know, he brought it, he, brought his unique non-traditional desires to her 
um, you know, a, a couple fetishes that he had, you know, nothing that nothing that's too extreme, but, you know, a couple fetishes he had and it did not go over well. Um, and she just, you know, shut him down was, you know, it, it was basically his worst nightmare. It's what mm-hmm. you're talking about. Mm-hmm. He felt rejected and they, we, we started working together and, um, you know, I, I brought this up of like, okay, I want to hear from both of you. Like, what is it that you, you both want to, um, experience more of in, in your, in your sex life. And they both, they both shared the things that, that they shared and, and he shared what he says is the same thing he asked her before, except he did it in a different way. And she was like, huh, that's interesting. You know, like, so, and, and had questions and was curious and excited about it. And he was dumbfounded because he was like, you completely shut me down when I asked you for this before. And she's like, you've never asked me for this. And I can't tell you how often that happens, Steve, where it's like, a a woman actually becomes more open to it partly because I'm just like, yeah, all of it's normal. And she has like, there, there's not like a, a, you know, a judgment from another woman, you know, part of it is like women just want to know what's normal for women and they don't want to be some kind of like, they don't want to be a freak or they don't want to be with a freak. But if, if they understand that what their partner is actually bringing to them is, is quite normal, then, then that just opens up the perspective. And the other part of it is the way that he brought it in the context of like, let's just talk about like some of our random sexual desires and, and she, she was able to actually listen to it. So there's, there's something, and, and it's interesting cause this is another, <laughs> this is a rule in advertising. You know, they say you, people have to see something, you know, seven times before mm-hmm. yeah. they, they become used to it. Right. And, and mm-hmm. sometimes that's the case with this kind of thing. It's like if a woman has never thought about being tied up and you mentioned tying up the first instinct might be like, what? That's weird. Mm-hmm. But next thing you know, it's accepted as, Oh, interesting. I could, I could think about that potentially. So th- there's a, there's a, there's a process that happens. And the next thing you know, she's actually loving it. Right. Mm-hmm. So there's a, there's, there's a process of like being, um, being patient with that. She feels as weird about it as you do, but that doesn't mean that it's wrong. That just means that it hasn't cross that threshold of normalcy yet. So whatever you can do to create that normalcy is, 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 is great. And yeah. So, so how does that land? Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes perfect sense. I mean, and it kind of ties into, cause you mentioned it a few times, you know, uh, porn, um, it, you know, and <clears throat> I'll just ask, you know, this question that, that, um, came from somebody and this guy watches porn a lot every day and and his wife is really opposed to it thinks it's unhealthy hurting their their marriage turning her off big time she's not interested in sex and so you know he i guess he is looking to know should he quit and i've seen this this conversation play out um in different groups where half the group will say it's terrible you need to quit get in a program and the other half are like no embrace it try to get her involved I mean, I, I don't know if there's a right answer even, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on, you know, should we just quit or should we, you know, try to get her involved even though she's against it? Well, I don't know if you've attempted to try to get your wife involved in something that she's against, but often it doesn't <laughs> work that well. Yeah. Um, so, so I think that there's it, that Okay. Here, here's, here's how I approach porn. And I might've talked to this about this a little bit last time as well. Um, but if, if the porn is being used as a coping mechanism and a way of dealing with uncomfortable or negative feelings, which is my sense from someone who says, My wife hates it, but I watch it almost every day. Like there's something about that where it's like, even though she hates it, this thing is so important to me that I'm taking my sexual energy away from the relationship and putting it into this other thing. Um, so 
she says it's unhealthy and it's hurting our sex life and marriage. Like my question is, why would you want to do something that is hurting your sex life and marriage? Um, and I think that often a lot of men are watching porn as a coping mechanism. I mean, I've heard it. They've, they've come to me, you know, like, well, it's, you know, it's like a, it's a stress relief or, you know, it's like I can just numb out or check out for a little while. And my invitation is turn towards your relationship and, and bring your sexual energy to her. You know, if, if she's, if she's upset that you're, that you're, that you're watching porn and says it's unhealthy, um, then I, I would, you know, I would wonder how she would respond to you saying, okay, well then I'd love to stop watching porn as, as an experiment and, and try, um, you know, being together more intimately, like try increasing our intimacy and our sex life and really putting my energy back towards you. Cause you're ultimately the one that I care about and I want to nurture our, our intimate life. So, you know, let's, let's do that. Let's like rechannel. I hear you. And I, let's rechannel this energy back, back into our relationship. Um, and I think that that can actually be, be really, really healthy. And at the same time, there are some partners who, who watch porn together sometimes and it's, and it's incredibly hot and they really enjoy it. And, um, and I think that, um, that, if you are willing to quit, that that becomes possible. If you're not willing to quit, then there's, there's something else. There's some kind of habit or addiction that that's, that's happening that is actually taking away from your relationship. So that's always my question is, is it adding to your relationship or not? If it's not, then what really matters to you? That's a good point. And I was just thinking of asking the other question of, why aren't you more open to this? Why, why is it quote unquote bad? You know, because I'm sure that conversation happens too, but you know, I, I like your take. Um, if you're willing to quit, that's a, that's an interesting way to look at it. But yeah. Um, I don't think porn in itself is, is, is necessarily bad. Um, although there is, I mean, in the last decade, some of the porn that has come out is, is, is incredibly violent mm. and I don't, you know, so there's almost like two categories of porn. There's like the porn that was there 10 years ago. And then there's like some new stuff that, you know, is, 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 um, you know, that involves even like children and, you know, I mean, it can get really, really, uh, yeah. some really dark stuff now. And, um, so I'm, I'm, I'm in no way condoning that. And I just want to make that clear. Um, you know, porn that's, you know, causing extreme amounts of pain that people like don't want to be going through. And, you know, there's some stuff that can, mm -hmm. can get really, um, really unhealthy, I think. And there is some porn that, um, that I, I don't think that it's actually the porn itself that is bad. I think it's the way that people are approaching it and watching it. It's the how, um, you know, why, why are you watching it? Um, is it, is it as something that you can, you know, share together to increase turn on in your relationship or is it as, you know, an escape from your relationship? Hmm. That's a good point too. Yeah. That makes sense. I'm just thinking through this. Um, so uh, let, let me ask you a couple other things when, um, you know, we could probably talk about this whole porn topic for a while. Maybe that's could be a subject for a, a, another show, but yeah. Um, I want to get to a couple more questions. Um, and so let me go, let's see. Um, my wife has a notion that she shouldn't have to ask for anything special or tell me what she wants because she thinks that it's planning our sex and it'll make it boring. We're in a rut and even using the tips from your first interview, she still doesn't want to open up about her wants or needs. Great. Okay. Love this question. So, this is something and just to understand the female psyche. Uh, I want to give you a little bit of context for 
why women have this idea that if they tell you what they want, it somehow loses its specialness or it, she, she doesn't like it. She doesn't want to have to tell you. She wants you to, to read her mind and just know. Uh, this is such a common thing in, in so many couples that I work with. And um, a part of, of where this comes from is actually this idea that women are raised with. You know, I, I talk a lot about programming and conditioning because I think it's what actually creates the um, the dysfunction in sex lives and relationships. And part of the programming that is having her feel this way is Disney movies. So women grow up, grow up with this, um, with, with the, the, the Disney culture or the knight in shining armor culture, thinking that, you know, this man is going to ride in on a white horse and, and somehow just know everything she wants. And then she is also taught that, I mean, there's some, some deeper programmings that women are still working against, you know, women are to be seen and not heard. Right. Or, you know, it, speaking up about your desires or, or wanting things, you know, has you not be a desirable woman like women are growing up and, and living in that programming, whether or not they consciously are agreeing to it or not. It's it's in it's in the culture. It's in the subconscious. It's in the collective. So what so so women are, are, have this idea that, that men are just supposed to know, and I'm not supposed to have to talk about it. Um, and, uh, in a lot of the work that I do, I mean, I also work with women, um, specifically and have a, a community to support women with this very thing of actually breaking this pattern. So it, and, and often they're like it, you know, it's like, it's not okay for women to have needs. It, they, they grow, they have this thought and this idea and this belief system. And so then that breeds an expectation and an entitlement that's like men should just know. And so I just want you to understand a little bit of the complexity of what's going on on the other side of that. And she can learn. She can absolutely learn that through experience, and I've seen this time and time again in, in couples I work with, that if she asks for what she wants and lets you know really specifically what it is, and then you do it and you, you know, you do it to the best of your ability and she opens herself to receive what you are doing and actually receive it, then it's just as enjoyable. And I have, I've seen women say this time and time again, and it, it's just that they, they, they don't know that it is. They think that they are hassling you to do something that you don't really want to do and that it's not going to be enjoyable. And, and most of the time that's because they haven't actually, actually really tried it. And they're working against a lot of their own programming with this. So that's, that's a little bit of the context. Now, part of relationship troubleshooting is that sometimes you need to try different things in different ways and little, one little tweak will make the difference that trying five other things failed at. And so if, if it's, you know, if it's been really challenging for, for her to open up about her wants and needs, like just know a little bit of where she's, she's coming from with it and, and, and try different approaches, you know, of just in, in conversation, just being curious, continuing to hold the frame of curiosity about what she's interested in. And it might mean actually showing her some of the potential possibilities. So with something like the erotic menu, which is the, the, like the, the erotic languages for similar to love languages, you can actually show her some ideas or a framework. And from that, she can be like, Oh yeah, I wouldn't have even known, but I am actually, you know, interested in, in exploring more of a, um, you know, more, more, more Tantra or, you know, something, you know, completely different. Um, and she might not have even known what was available. So sometimes when someone, and when she's not willing to open up about her wants and needs, it's like, she might not actually even know. 
So it's important to distinguish, does she not even know what her wants and needs are? Um, or is she feeling like she can't talk about it somehow? She doesn't know how to communicate about it, or she's feeling like she, you know, can't talk about it for some reason because of the programming I mentioned, or is it that she doesn't want to tell you for some reason? And so it's, it's, there's some troubleshooting to do here. Um, because depending on what that is, there's different ways that, that you can bring it that can really make the difference. Okay. So when I read this question, what I see and what you said makes perfect sense, what I see in, in who knows if I'm right or not, but maybe in this case or, or in a similar case, the woman feels like it's the man's job as a man to take responsibility and, and you know, figure things out, like make it happen. Like, listen, you're the man, I'm the woman. Um, you know, I don't need to tell you what I want. You need to figure it out, right? Like, so I see, you know, I shouldn't have to ask for anything. She doesn't want to tell me what she wants. I mean, again, I, I mean, I could be way off here, but I'm thinking there have to be some women out there that think that way, right? Like they want the alpha male to be, totally dominant, take charge with, you know, decisions like that and just take me by the hair, pull me into the bed and do your thing. Like that's, that's what you need to do as a man. Like that's what, that's what came into my mind. Yes. And I, me too. And that's, and, and I explained why that is Mm -hmm. right. Because of their women are programmed that way. Like women are not programmed to, to say, Hey, here's my desires. What I would like is this, Mm -hmm. this, and this, and here's how you can fulfill on them. And here's the owner's manual. You know, one of the things I, I talk about in, in, with couples is like a woman needs to give her partner, the owner's manual manual to her pussy. Like literally here's how it works. You know, like here's how my desire works. Here's how it's different because every single pussy is different. And, 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 and whereas, you know, the cocks are, are, are much more similar in, in a lot of ways, there's, there's a lot of differences in the way women are wired and, but women are not taught that. So they're, they're, they're taught to be, to, to, to actually just follow whatever their man wants. So she's just doing what she's taught. And so there's a learning that, that gets to happen over here with women where it's a, it's, it's a, it's a learning of, of going against all of that programming and, and learning to speak up about what she really wants. So you can, you can support her with that. Um, you can support her with that by, by letting her know that you are interested in pleasing her. Like you really want to know what she wants so that you can please her and that it's important to you and that you're willing to be patient and you're willing to listen and that you don't want her to just go along with whatever sex you want to have. You want to know what kind of sex she wants to have too. You want to know what really feels good for her and, um, and that, that you're willing to listen and that, you know, you're not going to take it personally like you should have already known. But you really want to, to know what she wants. Got it. Um, I had a couple other questions about that, but let's um, I want to move on because um, I have been on the, on the call for a while here and I want to get to just a couple more things if we can. So um, someone asked some good mental or mind cues for a spouse that's apathetic towards sex. And this is this has to be tens of millions of married men, right? A spouse that appears to be apathetic and like, eh, whatever. And I don't really care if we have it, we have it. If we don't, we don't. It's probably not great when they have it. Um, so he's looking for some, I guess, mental or mind cues, I guess, to help uh, them be more engaged. More yeah, engaged. absolutely. <clears throat> so um, I want to bring in uh, context here. So a lot of men have a, what, what is called spontaneous desire. So that means that they might just be 
going throughout the day and suddenly, you know, they, they get an erection and they're, they're ready to have sex. And that's about 75% of men. And only 15% of women have spontaneous desire. Um, the rest of women have a more responsive desire and some of men have more responsive desire as well. And that means that them wanting to have sex is context dependent. And so it depends on the environment and how they're feeling and how much of their to-do list is done and what the lighting is like. And if the TV's on in the background and if the kids have been fed and, and if, if that context is not satisfied or in, or in place, then they can't actually access their turn on. Um, so oftentimes when someone seems apathetic towards sex, it's because their mind is swimming in a lot of things that are not sexy. And so sometimes it's, it's about actually learning what are the things that really relax, uh, her mind and her nervous system so that her body is actually more open to being turned on. And, um, so, you know, turn on exists in the body and, um, and the, the, the sexual breaks exist in the mind. So it's, it's a matter of like taking things off the mind that would contribute to the sexual breaks and creating an environment where she can be more relaxed in her body where the, the sexual accelerator is. So if you imagine the mind as the sexual breaks and the body as the sexual accelerator, it's like, okay, so that might mean, you know, like taking, taking care of, of some of the things that, that need to be taken care of so that she can relax. Um, and then, and then, you know, putting on some nice music or some mood lighting or, or getting her a massage or giving her a massage or running a bath, you know, doing things that actually create a more sensual environment. A lot of women, once that happens, they, they, they just relax. Like I, I've, I've seen, I've in, in encouraged some couples to like, just go get a hotel room, even in town for, you know, once, once every week or once every two weeks to, to get yourself out of your house, where is like all the reminders of all the things she has to do and into a new location that, that feels like a space where she can just relax and be in her body more. And then from that place, she can actually be turned on. Yeah. I, I think, I mean, I think you just nailed it when you said her mind is swimming with a bunch of unsexy things as you know, mm -hmm. until you just said it. I mean, we knew it, but think about that. I mean, for everybody listening, think about that, you know, your wife. Yeah, exactly. Right. I got to, I have to cook dinner. I've got to do the dishes. I got to pick up dry cleaning the dogs, you know, throwing up the kids or have homework. None of those things are turned on and you can't just be like, Hey, let's go upstairs and get busy. You know, that's just, it's just not going to work. But a lot of us want that. And so, like you said, put a little work, figure out those things to ease that burden, right? Do the dishes for her so she doesn't have to do them. Like, the simple stuff. But yeah, I mean, it makes so much sense. Yeah, great. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, one more thing if I can. Um, so, uh, this, 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 this guy says, I lost a lot of confidence over the last five years. It's really taken a toll on my, on my sex life with my wife. It used to be hot and amazing. Now it's barely warm. And I think it has mostly to do with my lack of confidence because I'm just not taking charge and I just let her initiate and it's just not really working. So I guess my thought is, you know, how does a man reclaim that confidence when, you know, it could be a number of factors, whether it's a career or whatever, but maybe it's just from a wife shooting him down or, you know, um, putting him off or time after time after time. And finally he's just like, Oh, fuck it. I'm deflated. You know, like a lot of men walk around deflated, like, uh, Maybe I'll get lucky tonight. Maybe I won't, you know, and that's a turnoff, right? Women don't like that. Yeah. That's not sexy. I think this is more about living the life that you really want to be living. It's, you know, it, it's about like taking steps to 
fulfill on a mission that's bigger than you or, you know, really what has you feel great in, in yourself? If that's, you know, what I love about the work that you're doing is, you know, I mean, you're helping men to feel good in their bodies, to get fit. You know, it's, it's amazing how much more people want sex when they're in good shape. Like there's just something about that where it, it, it has them be more turned on because they're turned on by themselves. Mm -hmm. So it's like, are you turned on by you? Cause if you're not, then she's not going to be. And, and if you're not, then what would have you be more turned on by yourself and by the life that you're living where like, what would have you just be a big fuck yes for yourself? And, um, and I think that, you know, part of, part of this is like looking at like, you know, are you just showing up to work every day and like in the same routine and, and bored with yourself and bored with your life and no one can change that for you. That's ultimately, I mean, that's where each, each human being gets, gets to look inside and say, what is the most fulfilling life that, that I could live and how can I stay, take steps towards that today? And even in those baby steps, even in taking those little steps is more fulfillment, more energy, more of that life force that we talked about earlier, more of that experience of like, like I am the king of my own world. Like how can you show up as the king of your own world and and that is ultimately what then polarizes her into her feminine and, and has you create a healthy polarity in your, in your relationship. Like it's that, that confidence is, is something that is, is for you to find. Um, and this is, you know, I'm a huge fan of men's groups and men's work for this reason. Um, you know, I know you've had Traver Boehm with Man Uncivilized on your podcast. Mm -hmm. He's a good friend of mine and I fully endorse and support the work that he does with men. Mm -hmm. And I, and there's many others out there that are doing amazing men's work as well, um, where it, men have a place to get together and remind each other of their, their potential and their greatness and reconnect with their primal energy. So they aren't just in this, you know, grind that, that is not really what they want to be doing. They're actually taking charge of their life. If you're not taking charge of your life, it's going to be really hard to take charge in the bedroom. So sometimes it's like, I, I see men putting so much pressure on themselves to take charge in the bedroom when that's not even the issue. Like first go have the life that you want to have. And from that place, taking charge in the bedroom is like, it's, it's a byproduct. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that's it. There's my soapbox. <laughs> no, that was it. I mean, the guys listening should, should replay this a few times because that's just it. I mean, that's it. You take care of yourself, you know, live your life the best way you can and it will, it will translate. Um, yeah, I love that. I love that. So listen, so, um, you know, we've been on the phone for a while here. Um, and I, you know, I really want to do another one with you here at some point because this <laughs> mm -hmm. is just such a massive, massive topic, and so many guys need this. Um, but anyway, so we'll 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 cut it off here. But um, I want to drop some links here for for you, and people could find what you're doing. And I know I'll put in something to the erotic menu. Um, where else would you like uh, people to find you? So social media is the most updated place where, where i I put out a lot of content consistently on both Facebook and Instagram. Uh, my Facebook URL is facebook.com slash miss M I S S Jamie J A M I E Elizabeth E L I Z A B E T H. And my Instagram is handle at holistic sex coach. And, um, we can put those links in and then if you are curious about getting some support with communication and sexuality and really having your needs met between you and your partner, then I would recommend filling out the work with Jamie application and we can get on a complimentary strategy session call to, to talk a little more about that. 
Um, so that is on my website and that's jamieelizabeththompson.com. J A M I E T H O M P S O N E L or I'm sorry, J A M I E E L I Z A B E T H T H O M P S O N.com. And, um, that's right there on the, the homepage, um, under work with me. Um, and yeah, those are the best ways to, to get in touch with me at this time. Awesome. Yeah. This has been, this has been phenomenal. I think maybe even, um, better than our first call, to be honest. Um, Great. this was awesome. So yeah, I'm sure I'll get a lot of feedback and I'll even get more questions from this. So, um, hopefully, um, maybe we'll re- reconnect and, and do this uh, for a third time sometime in the future. Great. Yeah, this was great. Thanks for having me on, Steve. Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks for joining us. And remember, if you want more information, check out the Fit Dad Basecamp group on Facebook. And don't forget to stop by fitdadnation.com. Until next time, keep kicking ass and taking the next step. You can do this, Dad.